Hi, today we will be explaining the difference between three major terms used in electrical terminologies that is grounding, earthing and bonding. While there is a little difference between grounding and earthing and are mostly used interchangeably, bonding is a completely different term. So let's explain these terms in detail and clear the confusion between them. First to explain the term grounding. Grounding refers to connecting the live parts of an equipment to the earth. By live parts, we mean the parts that carry current under normal conditions. For example, connecting the neutral of a generator or the neutral of a transformer in a star connection to the earth. The term grounding is used in US and Canada, which follows IEEE, ANC and NEC standards. Grounding is done to provide a safe and effective path to the fault currents in case of a serious fault in the system to protect the overall power system from the damage. For example, in case of a star connection three-phase transformer, there is zero current flowing in the neutral. However, when a fault occurs in the system, the three phases become unbalanced. In such case, the faulty current flows through the neutral point and is discharged to the earth, resulting in balancing the system. In grounding, system neutral may be connected to earth with or without any resistance or impedance. If the neutral is connected to earth without any resistance, it is known as solidly grounded system. In case the system neutral is connected to earth through a resistance, such system is called as resistance grounded system. Grounding provides safety to the overall power system. Ground wire is denoted by black color in electrical nomenclature. Now we explain the term earthing. Earthing refers to connecting the metallic parts of equipment to the earth that do not carry current under normal conditions. These metallic parts include the enclosures, frames, supporting structures of the electrical equipment. The term earthing is used in UK, Europe and most of the Commonwealth countries that follow IES and IS standards. When a ground fault occurs inside an electrical equipment of the power system, high currents will flow through the equipment and the system. Due to the ground fault, fault currents will also flow through the metallic enclosure of the equipment. As a result, potential difference will be created between the metallic enclosure of the equipment and the ground. If a person touches the metallic part or enclosure, current will flow through his body because of the potential difference and will give electric shock to the person which can be severe. In case of proper earthing of the system, the fault current will flow to the ground from the metallic structure. So even if a person touches the metallic structure, he will not feel the electric shock as the current will flow through the earthing path due to its low resistance. So earthing provides safety to the worker. The earthing wire is represented by green color in electrical nomenclature. Next we explain another important term, bonding. By bonding we mean to connect all the metallic parts in the work area together to maintain them at same potential, that is ground potential. Basically we are connecting the earthing rods of all the equipment together. We achieve this by installing a mesh in the work area, for example the yard in a substation and connecting the earth rods of all the equipment to the mesh, thereby achieving equipotential between all the equipment. The mesh is generally referred to as the earth mat or ground mat. So by forming equipotential between different metallic objects, we are making sure that no current is flown between these metallic objects. The basic purpose of bonding is to provide safety to the worker in case of any fault. We will explain and clarify the concept of bonding with an example. Consider a tower installed inside a substation with an overhead transmission line hanging from the tower through disc insulators. During maintenance work on the transmission line, we open the breakers of the transmission line on both ends of the grid stations and attach portable temporary grounds or PTG on the transmission line. One end of PTG is attached to the transmission line conductor, whereas another end of PTG is attached to the earthing rod installed on ground. Now, in case of a ground fault on a transmission line due to any reason, the fault current will flow to the ground through the PTG and the ground voltage rises. This voltage decreases as we move away from the ground rod in any direction due to the earth resistance. Consider a person standing at point A. Now, in absence of bounding, if a ground fault occurs, the person at point A will be at different potential than the ground potential at the rod. Now, if the person takes steps from point A towards point B, he will experience electric shock because of potential difference between his feet. As one foot is on point A, whereas another foot is on point B, which is at a different potential than point A. The potential experienced by the person between his feet when taking steps is called as step potential. Similarly, consider another person standing at point C who touches the tower during fault conditions. He will also suffer electric shock due to the potential difference between hand and feet of the person. 
as the hand of the person is touching the tower which is at ground potential vg whereas his feet are at point c which are at a different potential vc this potential experienced by the person standing on ground while touching the tower is called as touch potential now both of these potentials and electric hazards can be eliminated using bonding by connecting the earthing rod to the mat or earth mesh provided in the work area all the earth mesh will be at the same potential that is ground potential vg thereby eliminating any chance of electric shock hopefully this video has cleared the confusion between grounding earthing and bonding if you have any queries you can ask in the comment section